Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Thanks for joining us again today on the podcast. I have Rukia and Madison. They are from a web platform called Tamvoos, and they're here to discuss what it is, why we should be, pay attention to it, and all the exciting things that are coming up. So thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks for having us. So much. You're welcome. So these guys are in Canada for my Canadian listeners. I have a lot in California, but I do have a lot in Canada as well. So how, where would you like to start? The history of how Tamvoos came about is probably a good place to start. Yeah, sure, yeah. Go for it, Madison. My name is Madison. I'm one of the co-founders of Tamboos, and I'm actually a university student. So from my perspective, uh, I, I'm in health. However, I've never really dealt myself with uh, an illness, a chronic illness, acute illness, anything in between. Uh, I did have the pleasure of working alongside two individuals um, who really inspired the story behind Tamboos. Um, and their, their names are Tina Tamming and Yvonne DeVoos, which really makes up the name Tamboos. Um, and the reasoning behind the story is that they really had such struggles within the healthcare system. Uh, Tina uh, struggled with bladder cancer um, and as well congestive heart failure. And uh, the difficulties that I watched them go through in terms of communicating with their family members um, about the difficulties that they were having with information. They were being kind of tossed from one healthcare provider to the next, one hospital to another. Really takes a toll on not only your mental health to have to continually repeat your story over and over again, uh, but also your physical health and uh, your family members as well who are kind of trying to follow you throughout that journey. And so that is really the idea behind Tamboos is to help individuals going through similar situations um, and giving them the tools that they need in order to communicate better with their family members um, and as well with their professional team, that being the healthcare providers, um, and then eliminating that repetition where you're continually having to go through this whole kind of depressing story of where, where you are now and how you got to where you are. Um, in terms of your illness. And so uh, that is what Tamboos provides. We are, again, a web-based platform. So there's many different features that enable individuals to do that. The main two are the journal, which is like an ongoing chronological journal of information. So this might be like appointments that you're going to, different conversations that you've had, events going on in your life, uh, and, and that's with you throughout your entire journey. And then the health profile, which uh, kind of speaks for itself, but it is sort of like your personal health record where you can collect all of this data and information about yourself and about your illness. And even if you are a healthy individual, you can start this early and have this kind of ready ahead of time. Um, and so, yeah, that's what that's what Tamboos is. And the uh, health record, you guys are working with health providers to, I don't know if subscribe is the right word, but to partner with you guys to automatically update a Tamvoos client's information on the, on the website, correct? Yeah, exactly. So we have sort of two target markets. The one side is on for individuals, family members, we call it the client side. Uh, and you can sign up for free for an account there. And then on the professional side, this is like a portal where your healthcare professionals can actually sign up um, and at a subscription cost, they can connect very easily with their clients that are on the, the client side of the platform. And there's streamlined kind of connections within communications, within sharing that information. And not only will you be able to share things with them, but they can actually share things with you and then take that extra step and share that information with your family members. So, uh, yeah, there is a bit of a connection with the professionals as well. Is that the biggest difference between you guys and like, I have an app for my health provider and they have like messaging within the app. I don't know that I could share it with like my husband or my daughter since I have not had much need for using them. Thankfully, I'm not familiar <laughs> with that option. And I don't know if you guys have this, a similar law to our HIPAAs, which is like the health information 
Privacy Protection, I think is what HIPAA stands for. Act yeah. would be the A. <laughs> so they're very, they're very, it's a very closed system. They, you know, like I know when like you'll make an appointment and they'll say, well, is it okay to like if to leave a message if you're not home? Yes. Is it okay to leave detailed information on the answer? Yeah, it's just my it's my mobile phone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, it's not like not like the old days where you push the button and everybody in the room could hear. Sure. So is to answer I, your question. Yeah, we we are HIPAA compliant. So that's great. It means professionals can share. Uh, profiles with other professionals. It also means that your information is safe enough for professionals to share it with you and then for you to share it with people. Uh, when we say your team, we mean people who your caregivers, your family members, maybe your kids. So um, yeah, we are HIPAA compliant. So it is a safe and easy to use uh, platform um, for convenience. Uh, it's also nice to have all of your, your stuff on the same place. So I think that's kind of Think about Tamboos as like the Google Drive for all of your medical documents, right? We are holding on to a copy of all of your medical documents and files um, in a safe and secure way. So they're easy to access uh, whenever you need them. That's that's a good analogy. Google Drive for your uh, your health documents. I like that. <laughs> Even though I'm a completely Apple person, so I use Dropbox, same, same deal. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, um, go ahead. I was going to say, I didn't even introduce myself. My name is oh. Rakia. <laughs> and what do you do for the company? So I am the marketing uh, coordinator for uh, Tamboos. So it's my job to um, spread the word of Tamboos. So um, in terms of the messaging, uh, simplifying the language. So it's it kind of seems like an overwhelming platform when you um, hear all of the details of it because it's so exciting. There's so many features that we have, um, but the the concept is pretty simple. Really, we're helping you help yourself. So we're putting all of your information on a platform that's really easy to use, super accessible. Um, so it's my job to kind of uh, do the outward education and outreach for what Tamboos does and what we're passionate about doing. Well, I know from having health emergencies with my dad, and he was on so many pharmaceuticals, it was just stupid. You, you know, you have to like gather all this information because even though the doctors prescribe all this garbage, they ask you, what medications is he on? It's like, I can't keep track of that much. Crap. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, seriously. And he had it in a spreadsheet and it wasn't in a drive because this was over four years ago. So, I mean, he at least had them in a spreadsheet, which was helpful. I am not a spreadsheet kind of gal. So it worked fine for my husband, who's definitely the financial side of the, the couple here, but just having to like, remember to bring it. And I've talked to people who put together binders of people's financial info or not financial health information. And it's like, I don't want to carry a binder around. I don't want to remember where that dang thing is. I'm like, I'm 54. So I did not grow up with all this technology, Oh yeah. but I would like to have it accessible. Like I have my phone. If I forget my phone, that's pretty unusual. But you, at least if you have everything there, you can access it like with your mobile. And I think that's that takes some of the stress out of some of the health crisis emergencies that we all seem to end up dealing with at one point or another in our lives. Yeah. So Rukia, a listener is, okay, we've got their attention. They're interested. Walk them through the what they would do to get started and the benefits of using this platform. Yeah, absolutely. So um, to get started, really simple, we're offering a free um, account. So you can sign up for a free account if you go to uh, tamboos.com. Um, and uh, on the actual platform to sign up for a free account, it'll walk you through the steps of filling out your journal, uh, putting in all of your health history and information. Um, and then from that point, it's just um, a matter of updating it. So um, every time you go to an appointment, um, adding the appointment uh, as an event in your calendar, sharing your uh, health history with your family and friends, maybe if you're a caregiver, um, sharing, having uh, your dependents share their profiles with you. So you are in the loop for all of their um, medical appointments. And um, if anything were to come up, you have access to, to their profile. Am I missing anything, Maddie? No, yeah, you definitely covered like the dependent profiles, how 
individuals can actually go on. And if you aren't necessarily that tech savvy person, but you may have somebody that's looking after you or, or caring for you, uh, they can actually go on and make this secondary profile under theirs and actually manage your health information on your behalf. So this could even be a young child just from the very beginning, which I think looking back would be so incredible to have every single event go on in your life just from the very beginning time. Um, and then on the other side of things, it might be an elder who uh, definitely is not as willing to get onto the internet and kind of jump into that. So um, yeah, otherwise I think you covered pretty much everything. I was going to say, uh, Jennifer, you, you nailed it right on the head. Um, we're, what we're seeing a lot of is people are still going to the doctor's office with that, uh, you know, do a tang, that little folder with all the paperwork and, uh, and still forgetting the details or having to shuffle through all of that paperwork to just find that, um, that one doctor recommendation could have been 10 years ago. And, um, we're not saying move away from paper. Paper is important. It's good to have your um, you, a, a, a file of all of your important documents, but it's not reasonable to carry around that, you know, file folder every time you go to the doctor's office, right? If if you have a record of all of that with you and it's virtual, that'll be um, it's just more helpful for you in terms of being more present. Um, you feel empowered enough to ask the right questions and. Um, you can um, you can focus on what's really happening in front of you instead of um, trying to keep up. Not to mention with COVID-19 right now, um, in Canada at least, in a lot of hospitals, you're not allowed to go in with anyone. So you're stuck, you're ill in some sort of way, you're at the hospital. Um, and now they're asking you to, you know, repeat your health history and and what just happened. And and you're you could be cognitively impaired, for example. You could um, just have a really poor memory or not really know much about your own health history, depending on your age and your demographic, et cetera. So having something that's accessible, simple for you to just pull up, somebody else could have even inputted all the information for you. Um, that's what makes it kind of just modern, I guess, in terms of rather than having that, you know, paper, duotang, binder, et cetera. I'm a really organized person and keeping track of all my mom's papers was just like, there was something, I don't remember, there was something from one of her doctors that I was like, I specifically need to keep this and I put it in one of those safe places, air quotes on that for people who aren't watching the video. And like I said, I'm super organized and I never did find it again. And on the flip side of the coin, especially in the last 10-ish years. I'm not really sure when doctors started keeping digital records that they could share with each other. I was shocked at how much stuff that the different doctors that, you know, my mom's general physician and her neurologist, it was like, do you guys speak to each other or communicate? Because I had to have like all of her neurological testing redone because they couldn't find her MRIs. I'm like, like, you expect me to have a copy of these? I'm like, I don't remember anybody giving these to me. So, or oh, my yeah. dad. And it was just frustrating because it's like, it would have been nice to be able to just handle, you know, like have all of her history without, you know, and, and being in charge of it so that I knew it was there and not, you know, maybe take a little of that responsibility off of them somewhat. It's just, it was frustrating. I'm like, how do you not have her information? And then you'd go to the doctor and they'd be like, can you tell me what medicine she's on? And I'd be like, oh crap, I forgot to ask the care staff. I forget yeah. because I didn't deal with it. I didn't have, you know, the care residence that she was in, they ordered, you know, when she got low on a prescription and she was only on like two, they would order it from the pharmacy that delivered and they just handled it all. So it's like her medications were not even like a thing that I thought about until somebody asked me and it was like, oh crap. I did get it to the point where I'd ask the care, the med techs to print me off what she was on. So that I can remind the doctor of what she's on. Like, why? I'm like, this is backwards. So much repetition. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, it's like, okay, you're asking me, non-medical person, and I'm asking the med, the med tech who's been trained basically to dispense what she's on that you put her on. I'm like, something is missing in this system. And it just makes me so frustrated. And of course, you know, the entire world knows what a stellar healthcare system the United States has. <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely. I, you know, we, we face our own set of challenges as well in Canada in terms of like health literacy is a big issue uh, with um, patients going to doctors and caregivers going to doctors. And like you said, they get the runaround. Doctors are asking them to pronounce these medications that are 27 letters long. And you're like, you know, I didn't go to medical school. How would I know that? But um, you knowing the name of that is a make or break for, you know, the kind of treatment that you receive. Part of the reason the, the platform was created is because you want people to feel empowered by knowing their actual health information. And um, when you know what's going on, you feel more in control of what your, um, your health journey is going to be. What I like about the journal is somebody could input, here's what happened today. This would be especially important for people who have like Alzheimer's or dementia or other cognitive impairments because there was days when you'd look back and like with dealing with my mom, I'd look back and go, oh, wait, I think X was actually happening and not Y. You know, like at one point close to the end of her life, I was like, I actually think this is a hallucination and we haven't had any of those before. And jotting that down, like today is February 10th. And I am fairly certain because of these reasons that mom had a hallucination. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I need to call the doctor or alert somebody. It was just an observation. And and having that information written down in an easily accessible place would be also beneficial because had we gone, what ended up happening is she broke her leg and ended up in the hospital right at the start of the pandemic. So I didn't have an opportunity where that information might've been beneficial to the doctor. Unfortunately for her and I, her doctor was really nice, but they're trained to fix people and you can't fix somebody with Alzheimer's. So he just, he never really seemed to have any, he was, he never seemed to be very helpful. You know, I mean, like I said, he was a very nice person. He seemed very knowledgeable in, in his profession, but you know, it just, it was like, like the Alzheimer's just stumped him. It was very frustrating. So I'm an advocate with the Alzheimer's Association here in the United States. And that's one of my things is like, we we're what we're asking for on a statewide level at this point is to require doctors to do their, they have their continuing education and there's 50 hours every two years. And four of those 50 hours, they're going to, they would like it to be required that it's on Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's like two hours a year. We're not adding to their, we're not adding to their workload. So it should be a pretty easy lift. And I did talk to one legislator and he's like, I think it should be in addition to the 50. And I'm like, I agree, but <laughs> You're like, this is what it says. <laughs> So that was kind of interesting. So I, I do see a lot of shifting and maybe after we get past this pandemic and the medical professions across the globe realize, man, Alzheimer's is a way worse uh, pandemic than uh, COVID. COVID's nothing compared to Alzheimer's and dementia, which is mm -hmm. a scary thought. At least we don't have to wear masks and go into lockdown for Alzheimer's. <laughs> There's <laughs> not no red zone, orange zone, all that stuff. Yeah. For real. <laughs> I know it's like, I don't even know who named it, but my my area is finally out of purple, which I would think would be good because I like purple. We're in red. So now we can actually go inside a restaurant, a few of us, not too many, and have a meal. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'll just wait. It's supposed to be beautiful this week. I'll just keep eating outside until I don't know when. <laughs> I don't know if the person coming up with this color scheme is colorblind because in Canada, the colors make no sense either. It goes from like gray to red to orange. And you're like, well, what is what is the severe, like, what is the end of the spectrum? No one's using the actual rainbow or colors that are recognizable. People have just selected random colors. Definitely not artists. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would think red would be like the worst, but I guess yeah. purple is darker than, I don't know. It's like, yeah, it makes no sense. It's insane. So what else do we need to know about, well, you guys, let me back up. You guys had an announcement today that I saw on Instagram a new addition to the TAMVU's platform. So you could tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, today we just launched our new community health blog. It's called Talkative. So um, Talkative is a safe space for patients, advocates, people who are just passionate about um, advocacy and uh, health. Um, to share their stories, their experiences. And we're hoping to build a bit of a uh, health community where people can 
look to us for support and guidance um, just by hearing the experiences of their peers and people in similar situations. So we're really excited. It's gotten such good um, traction so far. We've gotten a lot of people reach out to us, um, excited to share their own stories and experiences. And um, yeah, we, we would love to hear from you. You can, um, uh, on our Instagram, there's a form so you can submit to us. You can also send us a, a message. Uh, we're Tam Voos on Instagram, uh, T-A-M-V-O-E-S, and uh, send us a DM and we'll be happy to kind of walk you through um, how to submit uh, your, your health story. The link to their Instagram account is in the show notes. So you guys can just click on that. One of these days I might have to do a video, show people how to find all those hot links are at the bottom of the show notes. So I'd have to move those to the top one of these days. <laughs> and you've got some other other things in the works right now. Today is March 23rd, 2021. I think this is coming out in a month. Like I can't remember if it's three weeks or four, but it, it's coming out next month, April of 2021. So some of this stuff will not be quite as brand new, but you're working on something that probably won't won't be ready for prime time when this comes out. You want to talk about that at all? Yeah, we're really excited to, I was looking at Maddie, I'm like, <laughs> I don't, should I start talking? Um, yeah, we have a mobile app in the works right now. Uh, we're just uh, in the process of designing it. Um, and um, if a month from now, we will be further along. We're hoping in the next few months, we're going to launch a mobile app. So Tambu's uh, really can be in your pocket. If all of your health records, all of your health history, uh, you know, we have chat function that's coming out um, and all of that will just be on your phone. So now you don't need to go to the doctor's office with any paper, just your phone and you have it anyways. That sounds like right up my alley. <laughs> I want to be able to just stick it in my purse or like my daughter, she didn't even carry a purse. Better, better fit in her phone and her pocket or it's not coming with her. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the way the world details. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about the chat function that you're planning on. That that piqued my interest when you mentioned that. Yeah. So the chat is uh it's sort of a dual function. So we have the chat and we they then also have video calling. Uh and this one was something that we worked on directly with Blackberry. And the main reason why we did that, not only are they a fantastic company, um, but top of mind has always been security. Uh, with personal health information. And so they've proven to be experts in this field. Um, they actually work quite closely with a lot of governments in terms of their communications internally and as well kind of from, from one government to another government. So we, we were very, very assured that that type of security would be implemented in our platform and in our, in our feature. And so the chat and the video call will enable individuals on the client side to connect, chat, call people as well on the client side. So that might be your family members or close friends. And then as well, you can connect with your professionals who are on the professional side. So uh, different clinics might be your advocates. It might be uh, your doctor, whoever you might be connecting with on our platform. Um, and as obviously with, you know, COVID and everything that's going on right now, uh, the virtual world is that's kind of where where everything's headed or where everything has been, at least for the last year. Crazy to think that it's been that. long. Um, so we want to make sure that we can provide that sort of access and connection for people using our platform. Yeah, I think video doctor appointments are really beneficial for people like my mom because getting her in the car to the doctor, out of the car, into the doctor's office, deal with all the nonsense that I always always had to remind them that she had advanced Alzheimer's and please don't ask her three questions in one breath because I barely understood you and my brain is fine. It just was so frustrating. And I think I would get tense because I knew possibility for, I don't want to say a negative situation, but just she and I would go out to the park and watch kids. And so obviously going to the doctor's office is not anything similar to that. So it was just, there was always this heightened level of tension that she picked up on. So then she was tense and it just magnified and it was terrible. And I just had my, well, my own first and only so far video doctor appointment. It was the day of our advocacy where we normally go to the state capitol and 
we have appointments with the legislators, aides generally, and and we tell them we would like you to like support this bill about talking to the doctors having to just actually have extended training about Alzheimer's. And I woke up and I'm like, my ears have been itching for like a week. It's Friday and I've got like these Zoom calls because we can't go to the state capitol because COVID. And I'm like, I do not want to go to the urgent care Friday afternoon. And I know what will happen if I don't. I'm going to end up like waking up Saturday or Sunday morning and it's going to be like a problem that forces me to go to the urgent care over the weekend. So I'm like, well, let me see what my options are. Of course, you know, the advocacy Zoom calls were more important than figuring out why my ears were bugging me. So <laughs> priorities, right? Yes. Speaking so, like a true advocate. Yes. <laughs> well, and it was, it, they weren't painful, but it was, so if they had hurt, then I might've been a little bit more, it was like the weirdest thing. I've never, I've never experienced them like inside itching. And I'm like, this is very strange, but it, it wasn't a, like, I'm in pain. I need to deal with this quickly. So I looked at the options through the app with my healthcare provider. And I'm like, well, let me, let me do a video call. And I'm like, I can just see how this video thing's going to go. Cause they, they're going to need to look at my ear. Right. And that's going to be a little challenging on the computer. But fortunately I've been around the block a few times and I was able to explain to her all of the things that were different. And she gave me some ear drops that were like an antibiotic drop that also had an analgesic in it. That's what worked. So I'm like, okay, that actually worked. And I was skeptical because, you know, it's kind of like she had me touching like the eustachian tubes in the sinus areas and asking questions Mm -hmm. and be dealing with my mom and me being a mom and having my had my own ear infections over my lifetime. It's like I kind of knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I was a pretty good uh purveyor of my own information. And I was kind of surprised that she was able to diagnose it accurately, considering she never got to look in my own ears. Absolutely. You know, so, and it's just, for whatever reason, and I don't understand why care homes, at least in my area, I know some states have doctors attached to their memory care residences, which makes much more sense than getting them in the car and driving them to the doctor's office and all of that trauma because that's what it felt like but we don't have that option and I don't know why so prior to my mom passing away like the very end of 2019 the beginning of 2020 I was searching for a concierge doctor service because my mom's estate had plenty of money to take care of this kind of thing and other than her Alzheimer's her health was pretty good so I'm like you know I feel like we can have a doctor come in and check on her and do a few things. And there's one called Heal, H-E-A-L. But of course they don't service the suburbs. I'm like, that's where all the old people are. Like, why are you only in the big cities? That's not helpful at all. And so I'm wondering if that's changed in the past year, because I just, to me, that made perfectly good sense. And I was actually, I didn't even know there was actually a concierge doctor services but the team leader for our advocacy team, we were in Sacramento for advocacy day last year. It was like the only thing I got to do outside of my own city last year. And she, we were driving home and she's like, you need to do this. And I said, concierge doctors are a thing. And she's like, yes, we had those for my mother-in-law in Southern California. And she said it was like $6,000 a year. And they went to her and, you know, it was just lovely. And I'm like, we can do that. My sister will probably throw a fit, but that's okay. We're going to do it. And like I said, there was no options for that kind of service at any price, except for, I think like $1,500 a visit or something that was insane. I'm like, yeah, I'm not paying that. You know, I'll pay six grand a year, especially because she would have been like a money maker for them because she didn't need a lot of medical services. And then she broke her leg and passed away. And then it was about a month after she passed away, I got a message from her doctor going, oh, we're doing tele- televisits now. And I'm like, a little late for that, buddy. <laughs> well, you nailed a couple of things on the head in terms of uh, struggles that people face in terms of not being able to do virtual appointments. Concierge service is, is fantastic, but um, you know, with, especially with COVID and we can only assume COVID will stick around for a few more years. Uh, think of us as your virtual concierge service where we can video chat 
We can connect you with your providers via video chat, um, actual chat. Um, and um, we also have a lot of features uh, like including predictive analytics. I know you talked about your, um, your experience uh, with not knowing your symptoms with your, uh, with your ears. Um, and um, we also have a medical search function that's a lot more accurate than uh, Googling your, your actual um, symptoms on Google, because every time you do that, I don't know, you know, you get ear cancer and, you know, every time I have a swollen or a rash, it's just, I'm going to die in 24 hours. <laughs> and that's what Google will do to you. <laughs> yeah. But, that's not a good, that's not a reassuring uh, way to find out what could be wrong. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But um, Maddie, if you want to um, go into the the medical feature, it's it's actually really fascinating how how we how you can use it. Yeah. So sort of as you're saying, just with like going to Google, finding this unreliable information, and being like having this sort of anxiety and unsurety with that, um, and and what you're supposed to do with that. Like, what's next after I've just been told I'm going to die in 24 hours, for example. <laughs> Something like that. How do we get a doctor's um, appointment in 24 hours? <laughs> right. And, and then, and then if, if that is the case, then we're wasting time with the doctors, et cetera, et cetera. So this is something we were, we we're providing both on the client side and on the professional side to have this reliable information for individuals who, you know, they might not want to have to call their doctor and say, I have, um, you know, my toe, I, I stubbed my toe and I think like I might have toe cancer or something. It's like, well, <laughs> Oh, like you just took 10 steps forward. Like, why don't you just result to something that's, um, you know, giving you information from reliable sources. So where it's querying from is journal articles that have been uh, really taken from only the top databases uh, of information. And we're bringing this to your fingertips through what's called the medical search. And we really just want to enable people. And again, I think Ruki has talked about this, but in empowering people with their information. Um, really focusing on knowledge and and that health literacy aspect of things where people really don't have much of an idea of what they've been diagnosed with or what the doctor's trying to communicate to them about a diagnosis. Um, And so, again, just this information being accessible, being readable and and, and understandable. Um, And then one of our other features sort of along those same lines of, of empowerment is with the predictive analytics. Uh, eventually we're going to be able to actually take data points on your vitals. So say something like your health, um, sorry, your heart rate. Uh, Everybody has sort of like a resting heart rate. It doesn't really change. So let's say it's like 65, 68 resting heart rate. All of a sudden for like three days straight, your heart rate is up to 80. So the system actually is going to pull out that data point and use what's called predictive analytics. And it's going to just inform you, just give you a little nudge to take a a second look at what's going on. Uh, First of all, you might not have even noticed it yourself. Um, And second of all, you have no idea what that means. So you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so worried. All the system is going to do is say, hey, maybe you should uh, check your temperature. Maybe you should check in with your doctor. Maybe you need to get your um, blood work done. And just that that step before things could get worse. Um, There's so many different like ongoing signs and data that can actually lead us to an early diagnosis and a predictive, um, sorry, a preventative sort of standpoint. Whereas I feel like in today's society, our our healthcare system is so reactive, like something happens, now what? Whereas we can very much take advantage of knowing how things progress and where we can really just find information before it happens um, and take advantage of that. I have a perfect story that goes along with that. My husband's had an Apple watch for a long time. Um, I got one for Christmas this past year. And what was it, 2019? Yes. We'd go walk the dogs and our previous home was up in the hills. So there wasn't too many feet to walk before you had to go uphill. And he literally could barely go half a mile before he was just really, really out of breath. And we'd walk with our friends and, you know, we had the old guy. So he walked really slowly and our neighbors, one of which walked normal pace, the other one walked really fast. So (laughs) he would hang back with our neighbor. What ended up happening is he ended up with blood clots in his lungs. And, you know, like everybody, for the most part, you know, you 
you don't, you don't want to assume the worst. And I not sure if he Googled it or not, but he got very close to, by the time he went to the hospital, it was like, uh, you should have come in sooner. So he went back after being diagnosed with the blood clots and everything and getting that all taken care of. He went back to the information in his Apple watch and the health app and saw exactly what you were talking about. Like his resting heart rate went up. There was, there was definite signs that something was going on, but he just didn't, you know, like if it had pinged him and said, you yeah, dude, something's up here. Like, uh, this is a warning, like, you know, <laughs> push notification warning. Your health system is, uh, or your health, your health app is giving me a, a warning sign would have been really beneficial because, you know, we like to just, I mean, it was, overweight so it's like you know it's easy to kind of say i don't want to go to the doctor and he's like i didn't murder him that night because i'd been i'd spent the entire afternoon with my mom and we went out to the park to the watch the kids we ended up waiting in the pool and she at the time was giving the caregiver a real fit about showering so i'm like i conned her into the shower under the pretense of washing off the chlorine even though basically it only got around her ankles (laughs) So I'm like, okay, I never really wanted to do this, but okay, we're going to, we're going to do this. And by the time I got home, I was exhausted. And he's like, I think I need to go to the hospital. I'm like, here's your keys. Take yourself. (laughs) I was so tired. And, you know, they kept him for three days and now he's really, he looks at, he does not have the most current version of the Apple watch. Mine has the, the pulse ox. So that's kind of interesting to poke and look at. I'm like, okay, my blood oxygen's 99%. I guess I'm okay. And but some of the stuff that it tells me is, is really interesting. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a really good tool because had he had literally just a push notification that said, whoa, something's up, you know, you might want to call the doctor. I think he might've paid attention to it sooner rather than later and any later. And it would have probably been not a good outcome. Absolutely. And it's that sooner piece that we're really holding on to it's that's the the preventative piece it's uh it's it's so much better to go to the doctor and the doctor say oh it's nothing opposed to going to the doctor and now your your leg is being amputated you know uh, so <laughs> that's definitely the worst case scenario but um that's that preventative piece where we definitely want people to feel empowered enough to also know that um there's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to your health it's a priority so making that call um, early when, um, before something happens, absolutely. I was going to say the worst case scenario is the doctor asking you if you have all your affairs in order. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the worst. No, that's, that's, not, that's a little bit worse than the leg amputation, although I wouldn't want that one either. So is there anything else we need to tell people about so that they're jumping on Tamvos and checking it out after they've done listening to this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's free. You can literally sign up for a free account for free, for free. And, uh, <laughs> Did we mention it was free? <laughs> definitely free. And it's because we really, we really care about people. It's that a- advocacy piece. We want people to feel empowered by their own health information. We want people to even just be curious about what's going on in their lives and in their health. So um, you have nothing to lose signing up for free and uh, just to scope it out, check it out, see how it would work for your lifestyle, your family, your dependents. And um, we can guarantee that it's going to be a valuable resource in your life. Um, And that's just the free version. So free, sign up for free. (laughs) (laughs) To add to that, um, just that we've talked to so many different individuals that have used our platform Um, And one of the things that we really prioritize is the people that are using it. And so if you do jump on and you have feedback, always definitely feel free to reach out. Um, We've sort of built this with seniors in mind, so it's very easy to use. Um, And we've we've actually went through, had focus groups with these seniors uh, up to 90 years old. Uh, have them sort of look around the site. Where's this button supposed to be? What does this make sense being here? So we always want to interact with our customers and make sure that everybody's kind of getting what they need from our platform. So we appreciate any feedback. Yeah. And if you're having, um, and if you need an extra hand to learn about the site, uh, how to sign up for a free account, 
Um, just if you need uh, some assistance with navigating, we're really happy to jump on a call with you and help you set up a free account. So um, you have our contact details in the summary. Uh, reach out to us. We'll set up a one-on-one uh, -on -one with you and we'll help you and your family get set up with a free Tambres account. That sounds terrific. And I think being knowledgeable about what's going on with yourself makes it easier to advocate for yourself or your loved one, like my mom, at the doctor's office because some of it is so, it's complicated and confusing if you're not trained in medical speak, <laughs> which most mm -hmm. of us aren't. And it just, I think it's a tool that it helps you that allows the doctor to be more effective for you or your loved one. So I think this is fantastic. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks Thank so, much. so much. You're welcome. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.